Okay, let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, um, so welcome to True Way ASL Unit One Point Three. This is the the video lecture. Um, so I'm going to go through everything in One Point Three, trying to explain what you're going to see in videos, the concepts, and some of the signs. Double, okay. Second webcam. I was making sure it wasn't recording. Okay. So, um, so first of all, we're still in uh, one point. Well, unit one, which is the sort of welcome to the deaf world. That's bothering me. Hold on. There we go. Okay, that's better. <laughs> uh, now it's going to probably bug me the rest of the way. Okay. So the first thing. Can I move this thing? I can't move that. I, that is okay. Well, I guess I can. Um, okay, so the basics, basic ASL stuff that's going to be introduced in this chapter. Um, here's a little summary. There's going to be the snapshots, you know, all the different videos that they're going to show. Um, one of them is why is everybody signing too fast? And it's specifically addressing for uh, ASL1 students of like, why are the videos not slow so I can follow? Um, <laughs> It's a choice they're making is that they're going to just sign the natural way and not uh, make it make it um, accessible for you is not really the right way of saying it. They want to, they want you to see ASL as it's performed, as it's spoken, and not tailor it and make it overly simplified for ASL one students. I think there's a middle ground we could have found, um, which is why I'm working on putting in voiceovers for um, many of them. So. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to, <laughs> what to say about that. Um, but this is ASL in its natural state. So this is the, the normal way people will be signing. Uh, there's some fingerspelling tips. Uh, they're going to talk about first and last names, pronouns, possessive pronouns, um, using when to use uh, the point pronoun and when to use the palm pronoun. And some of the confusion that can happen there, uh, go through the alphabet and hand shape errors, um, common uh, hand shape errors, which happen a lot, uh, uh, basic sentence types. And then there's an interesting essay, video essay on uh, the term deaf disabled. Um, there are a lot of issues within the deaf community where uh, sort of similar to in the hearing community where people will not want to be labeled as dis disabled and yet there are people who have significant disabilities in addition to being deaf and there's an issue with them not being represented and wanting to uh, bring that to the fore in many discussions so um, uh, there will be when we get closer to that we can talk a little bit about uh, that video itself it, it is a challenge because the person signing uh, is both deaf and has, I believe, cerebral palsy. So um, signing can be both difficult to produce and difficult to read. Um, so I might as well now introduce the, the sign that they're using is deaf and then bringing the hand down to DA, disabled, deaf, disabled. Um, and it literally is just putting those two signs together. But they want to try to make... Um, make it common parlance that people are used to that term as opposed to being like what is that just to know from the start what it means um so then they'll go through the asl alphabet um there'll be some practice on spelling different words and getting to do that when sign substitute there's two different issues the one that they're going to talk about is if you can't if you don't know the sign for something our first impulse is usually to fingerspell it. And that's not always the best choice. It's not always the most clear. Sometimes the best choice is to act it out. Um, so you kind of have to weigh it in your mind, especially if you don't really feel great about fingerspelling, acting it out would be a better choice. So if you're like, I don't know the sign for baseball, or I don't know the sign for bowling, but like, act it out and people go, oh, oh this is the sign, bowling. Right, great or bowling, some people do sign bowling, which is probably more accurate, right? Because actually, no, I don't know anybody who bowls this way. I always, anyway. Um, 
And then there's ASL activity of practicing fingerspelling. We'll review the WH question signs, which we'll go through in here. And then uh, practicing using the fingerspelling with your name, what, asking that. Um, and then there's an activity in here, one of the videos where you're going to be, oh, well, I'm not sure if we'll do the video or not, but to be able to look at someone signing a sentence and identify what type of sentence it is. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it a question? Um, ideally, even if you don't know the signs, you should be able to know based on the um, the eyebrow movement what kind and the non-manuals what kind of sentence it is. Again, we'll go through pronouns using the pointer finger and using the possessive pronouns. The uh, her versus her. <laughs> Okay, sorry, just making sure I'm... So, the, this is just expanding on what was in the previous one, but the her versus her, plural pronouns. Um, the plural pronouns are when we're adding, as opposed to just you adding two people. Two of us, two, we'll go through all those. Um, two of them, uh, you can do that up to nine. Most of the time we only we do up to five in most practical conversations, but sometimes we can um, go up to nine if we need to. Um, using groups, we so far in class we've done like a sweep where you're pointing to all the people or them, them. Um, we can be more specific and give a number as we sign that. Um, also, more of the list of like the deaf disabled. Uh, there's also deaf blind, deaf, hard of hearing, uh, late deaf, uh, late deafened, or um, or hearing. I do want to point out that uh, there's definitely cultural differences between hearing people and various groups of deafness, um, which is why deaf, blind, deaf, disabled, deaf, hard of hearing, late deaf, and all are capitalized because they are definitely communities, each having different uh, needs and expectations. And hearing is not really a culture. Um, it's it's too broad. It covers too many things, and it's uh, it, on its own. It doesn't have the same type of specificity or commonality. Um, and then we'll go through times of day, general times: morning, noon, afternoon, night, that kind of thing. Um, we'll review some basic greetings: hello, good morning, blah blah blah. Uh, feelings, moods, good, fine. We've done most of, this is now starting to do review of stuff we've done in previous chapters. And again, I tend to introduce this stuff for conversation in class so that when they're introduced in the um, lectures or on the slideshows or on the modules, that it's more of a, of a review for you. So when you watch those videos, those should ring a bell. Um, we'll do days of the week. This is something new. And then included in that, something like your assignment is due on this date or something is due. And then introductions, how to meet someone. Well, not how to meet someone. Swipe. No. Um, but um, how to introduce someone or introduce yourself to someone to doing the exchange of names and some initial questions. And then um, some manners, but some conversational openers or um, ways to approach a conversation. So we will go into that. Um, there's a conversa conversation starter, there's that guided dialogue, and you'll see that at the video at the end. By that point, we'll have established every bit of information that's in there. Um, we've got some basic signs. We'll talk about opposites. Um, there'll be an ASL activity. And it's really a conversation that we're facilitating. And then a review of everything we do in here. So... Doo -doo -doo -doo. We talked about, I talked already about why are, why is everybody signing so fast? So these are the snapshots. Um, let me make sure it like we're going through the videos. There's that, there's that, there's that. I should pause. Hold on. Okay. We're back. Okay. So I just wanted to double check that I had these in the right order. So, the snapshots, as they're listed in the modules, start with, why is everybody signing so fast? And I've explained it, but watch the video and read the paragraph. Same thing with fingerspelling tips, uh, corrections, common handshape errors, 
common sentence types, um, first and last names, pronouns, possessive pronouns, her versus her. Now, that's the one where it's the difference between and this. And I'll explain that, and there will be some pictures in the slideshow. Um, and then the essay on deaf disabled. So I know this is repetition, but um, this is specifically looking at the snapshots. So the ASL alphabets right here, I'm including um, links as I get this Google Doc, and I can put it up into the modules with resources for this. Um, I hate static images. I really wish they were using GIFs. If I have some GIFs that I can put in there, um, it's better if I put them in a Google Doc than in this slideshow, because if you have a ton of GIFs, it bogs up memory, and if you're if you're streaming it, it'll it'll be awful. So, um, watch that video of Joseph Wheeler doing the finger spelling. That's sort of the best one. You know, I I could do it, but it you'd be looking at my ugly mug, and he's cuter than I am. So. Handsomer, I suppose. A, B, C, D. Now, I, I want to point out that there are two different, there are a couple different ways you can do D. Variation one and variation two. You can do D with the entire, like, O, D, or O, D. No. Um, or you can do it with just the middle finger. You'll see both. Whatever feels more comfortable. At this point, probably nothing feels comfortable. So just see what your hand kind of naturally does as you do it. But they're both correct. E, again, always try to touch the fingertips to the thumb for E. Uh, eventually, they will spread apart when you're finger spelling fast. But for right now, try to be as clear as possible. Um, F. And F is not this. F is this. Do the little Fortnite. That's the sign for Fortnite. G. Now, G and H, again, they tend to be forward. But that's hard to, that's hard to see if that was your illustration, which is why they tend to do this. Um, sometimes you will see people sign G and H like this, and that's to be clear if they're giving information. Um, and also ASL1 students will tend to see that more often because people are trying to be really clear. But watching deaf people in conversation, G and H tend to be forward. Same thing with C. I and J. J doesn't go to the outside. Like, it goes inside. You're scooping something. You wouldn't scoop something on the nail. <clears throat> Dig into that cheesecake and take a big fingerful and enjoy it. K, remember K is peace and you touch that knuckle. K, L, M, and O, and O it tends to be on that 45 again, but it, that can be that can look like an E if you don't have depth perception if you're on video. So some people will just turn it to the side so we can see the O. But most of the time in fast conversation, it'll be like that. P Q R S T U V W X Y und Z. All right. Um, there's a little there's a little exercise. Spell the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That will get you using every single letter. Um, so this is the recommendation of avoiding finger spelling, especially now because finger spelling is so new and frustrating. Uh, so that if you're in conversation, try to act it out or draw it or illustrate, you know, somehow draw it in the air um, rather than just finger spelling what it is. It might be clearer. So a finger spelling activity of practicing finger spelling, we would do something, we'll be doing things in the classroom, starting with names, then doing like movies, book titles, things like that, just to give you a chance to finger spell. Um, so now we're getting into the different sentence types. So a WH question, open-ended question is what they're referring it to, uh, or referring to it as, that you're asking for an open, it's not just yes or no, which is closed. This is two possible answers. This is, you're opening the doors up for whatever answer they give. So eyebrows go down, head, the body kind of tilts forward like, well, right? Um, we haven't talked about the body shift uh, in class. We've just done the eyebrow and the gesture and the, and the sign. So um, just be aware that we tend to lean forward a little bit when we're doing that and tilt our head. Um, the WH word comes at the end of that sentence. 
So you, oh, even if you've signed it at the beginning, you still want to sign it at the end. That's that's the important thing. Uh, or that's the important sign. Then hold the last sign to make it clear that you're waiting for an answer. Don't just say your name what. Go your name what. And wait until they start to give the answer and then respond. So pause there with the eyebrows down so they know, oh, this is a question and I'm supposed to answer it. Um, it's a good thing to get used to because then, uh, especially with each other when we're practicing, um, no one's going to sit there and like deer in headlights going, oh, what did me, 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 no, what? Oh, you want me to answer? Okay, here's my answer. So wait till they start to answer and then you can drop that. Um, and the comment at the end, one through five, they're all at the end of the sentence. Basically, that's just remembering that this is how you finish the sentence. They all happen at the same time. That they're not a sequence of things that happen in order. So here are the WH signs. Um, we did a couple of them in class, but here are all of them. Um, there's actually one more. There's nothing there. So we've got what? And it's a glorified shrug. And if I forget, always put the eyebrows up. What? And then who is up in front of the mouth, and you're just who, 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 who. My name sign is this for Larry. So it's just, you drop it down from the nose to the chin. And most of the time we also mouth it. Where? Where, 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 where? Where is that? Um, when, there are two different ways to sign it. There's when, and as they say here, that all of these have variations except for which, which is the only one that has like one set thing. So there's when, the clock face, the, the hands going around the clock face, um, or when, like what time, at what time. Let me pause again. Okay, sorry about that. And, uh, <laughs> had to jump off for something. Um, okay, so we have what, who, where, when, and the second one is time, right? So what time is, at what time. Um, y is going to use the hand shape Y, and you're going to bring it from your forehead down to Y. Why? Um, there's a variation of this, which is Y. It's just a shortened version. Why? Kind of like we've talked about how... So, um, signs will generally go from the larger shape, the more complicated sign to the simpler sign. So this is more of a bigger movement. It uses the shoulder. Um, this is just using this. It's the proximalization uh, heading that we talked about in the previous one, where um, the bigger movements will tend to simplify as the language develops. So why, why, which, it's always just which, which, similar to the sign for maybe, which, except for eyebrows. Um, how, how, and how is the alternate, is the variation. How many, toss things up in the air. How many, how many seats, how many chairs, how many people, eyebrows down. Um, you could do it one-handed, how many, how many. And what kind or type, you'll see people do this kind. It's two K's and they circle each other. It's signed English, but kind. One thing that's on here that I want to add, I sh I'll add it to the, the, let me add it to this. Okay. I added, what'd you do? What'd you do? Or what are you doing? Right? What are you doing? So that's another WH question. Eyebrows go down. Um, so different ways to say, what is your name? your name, what, or you name, what? They are different questions. Um, when you're saying my name is something or I'm named something, there's a slight difference. I just want you to feel the difference between the two of them. Um, in a quick statement like this, it almost doesn't matter. I just want you to be aware of the difference between me and my, because it's especially important if you're talking about this person and their thing, which we'll talk about in the her versus her comment a little bit later. Um, and then my name, fingerspell, or me, 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 my name is this. Um, imagine that you're 
meeting someone and you're like me oh my name is this or oh, oh, i'm the supervisor i'm the director i'm the teacher or me um you can see their difference of oh me me I, i'm the i'm the teacher or oh me oh my name is larry so just early on, it's going to seem like, well, what's the difference? They're both interchangeable. But just like in English, me and my are different and they have different applications. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, again, the yes, we go back to the yes, no questions. Eyebrows up. All these things happen at the same time. Eyebrows up, a little forward, leaning, tilting your head. Hold the last sign until the person starts to respond. You can also do this. Um, you can, uh, even without a question, it can be, hmm? um, ba, 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 ba. so this is like a, a, a little question mark you can put at the end. It's also, um, it could be a, huh? Huh? Right. Um, Nathan Marbury was one of the, uh, most, influential uh, deaf storytellers and teachers for many years. She passed away a couple years ago and um, she was one of the creators of this, the whole TWA. So you can also ask questions like, is your name this? Um, and you can start by Nathy, your name or your name, Nathy. Notice that the Nathy in the first one and your name in the second one are the topics. So we raise it up for a topic and then it kind of relaxes and raises back up for the question. For a yes, no question. It kind of feels weird to, to so there's really a, it's gonna feel weird to get used to moving the eyebrows that much consciously, so understand. Um, ba, 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 ba. So practice each of those sentence orders. So there's also a statement of neutral statement where it's not a positive, it's not a negative, it's not a question. It's just a this. He's here. No opinion. Shakespeare's here. Right here. Whatever. Um, so you can do neutral where it's just information. Um, the guy's here to kill you. I don't care. Or he's here to totally beat you up. Yeah, him right there. Go ahead. He's right here. Versus uh, he, he's not here for a good reason. He's he's not here. No, that's bad. Um, a couple of more sentences that are, oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot. Yeah. Or, oh, I can't go. Me go there. I uh, can't. Sign for can't. You... Um, you're going to want to do it palm down for both hands. Imagine if you did it sideways and whacked this really hard, you will hurt <laughs> this finger, right? So can't palm down for both. Can't. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. And with that, you'd be like, no, 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 no. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I don't want to. Um, neutral. My name. If you're confirming it. Oh, uh, my name is this. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the three statement types, neutral, positive, negative. Um, so there would be an activity we can do. Um, it would, I, I think they have them, uh, the activity in the module. I'm gonna take a look at it. Um, if not, I can create it. We can do it in the classroom where you identify them. Even if you don't know the signs, you should be able to say, oh, he's nodding his head. He's shaking his head, he's neutral. His eyebrows are down because he's asking a WH question or his eyebrows are up. And maybe he's doing this because he's asking a close ended yes, no question. So if you can watch uh, one of the dialogues and be able to point out, oh, this sentence is this type, this sentence is this type. Um, it has nothing to do with the signs. It has everything to do with the non manuals. And if you can do that, it's a great sort of support that will help you as you identify signs and sentences. So about halfway through, let's keep going. Um, pronouns. Now, one thing that they're pointing out is it's this. 
it's not this you come here that's totally different that's like hearing gesture boss you go over here um this is you you happy you so we always in asl we use this for the conversational side not this um again it applies me um i tend to write me as opposed to i when I'm glossing, when I'm writing down the signs, just because it's clearer, because an I could be a line, it could be a, it could be an, a lowercase l. In my email address, I always write a capital L, capital N, earring at kent.edu because L could be a capital I, and it can be confusing to people. So I always do a capital L. So I always write me when I'm writing ASL gloss. Um, you third person. So if, if it's who I'm looking at, it means you. If it's to myself, it's me. If it's to someone I'm not looking at, it's third person, him, her, them, uh, it. If I'm talking about my dog, although I do say him. Um, we and us is a sweep, including everybody who's in, we're going for ice cream. We. Um, they, pointing to other people, they, 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 um, and it. Usually, it, it. Don't do that. To, don't say that about people. That's not very nice. Um, so, again, we don't have gendered pronouns in there. The possessive me, same way we point me, you, their, uh, his, her, the singular, ours. So it's kind of the same sweep, ours, and you're including yourself. Theirs is pointing out. And it's. Oops. Well, here's the question of her versus her. And there's a video for this. There's a video for each of these. But think about how we use in English. We use her for both. I like that person, her, as a pronoun. And I like her shoes. It's different for men. I like him. I like his shoes. So I want to make sure what, that we're separating what the meaning is. For her... I like her, the person, you're going to point, like her. I like, so it's like you're pull, pulling off a little piece of lint. Oh, I like her. And I like her shoes, sign for shoes, her shoes, her, possessive pronoun. So keep that in mind. I like him. I like his shoes. Right? So just be aware that those two hand shapes are not interchangeable like with me and my. So we can include numbers, generally speaking, up to five. That's the most useful. So what I'll do is just like we did with same, where we said, you two are the same, like two index fingers. I can do you two come with me. You two, except I'm one-handed. I'm going to use, normally it would be like a V, but that's really uncomfortable sign. So a K is much more comfortable. You two, you two, you two, you two. We two, we two. Right, so you're using the K. Three of us. Three of us, I include myself. The three of you, I'm talking about those people. Um, so I'm including who, I'm including you and the, the three of them over there. So again, the same thing. If it's with eye contact, then it's you. Four. Four of us. Four of you, four of them, five, five of us, five of you, five of them. And from then on, you could do a group or group. You can do a G. I prefer the open hand, the open like claw group, group of us, group of you, group of them. You can go up to nine, nine of us eight of us, we haven't gotten the numbers yet, but I just want to give you examples. We can do that. We can include those numbers, but they're kind of awkward to sign. And after five, it's rare, that, like 15, 15 of us, everything above 10, you would have to do a separate number for reasons we'll explain when we get to numbers. So up to five is the best, and then just do group. Um, so that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, signs, they'll introduce them. Uh, deaf, so we know deaf, and deaf can go either way. Ear to mouth, mouth to ear. 
deaf blind, deaf blind, and we use the the bent V for blind. Don't actually make contact. You don't want to hurt yourself, especially if you have nails. Blind. Um, deaf disabled. And so we just bring this hand up and go DA. Deaf disabled. It comes from being interrupted or, you know, but it's now just sort of on the hand. Disabled, disabled. Deaf, it should be first. Whatever. Hard of hearing, H, H. Hard of hearing, hard of hearing. Some people don't uh, find themselves part of the deaf community. Hard of hearing tends to be people who have lost their hearing um, post-lingually, after they already have language. So sign language it may be something they have, but they still are primarily, they see themselves as more aligned with the hearing community than the deaf community. Someone who's, someone could have the same level of hearing loss, it could be mild, but they've associated themselves with the deaf community and they sign as their primary language, they would be considered deaf or would consider themselves deaf, where someone who has lost their hearing and still is primarily reading lips and um, speaking, that would be hard of hearing. That's usually the, the delineation. People who are late deaf and who are experiencing deafness will often do, times do hearing, and this is like hearing, my hearing is deteriorating. So it's going from up, it's going from pretty decent to pretty bad, like so deteriorated. So hearing deteriorated or hearing, most of the time I've seen it pointing to the ear because it doesn't, it's not the sign for hearing. And hearing comes from the sign for speaking, right? He's hearing. Um, so that was the hearing deteriorated. Time of day. What we're going to do is we're going to sign where the sun is in the sky. So in the morning, the sun is coming up over the horizon. So here's the horizon, passive hand, morning. Noon, it's directly above, noon. Afternoon, it's starting to descend, and night. You'll also see variations, evening. You can show like, oh, the morning was going. You've seen me sign all day, that whole sweep from sunrise to sunset, and all night from sunset to sunrise. So we're picturing where it is. You can, you can, if you're saying like five o'clock in the afternoon or seven o'clock in the evening, where it's, you know, that time between the afternoon and the night. So it is a, it is a continuum that you can sign, but the general sign morning, don't do this morning, noon, afternoon, night. Imagine what the sign for midnight is. It's kind of hard to sign midnight. Sometimes people will do it with a 12 or 12. Um, so you can do that. We're not including it here because it's a little awkward to sign, especially at first. Badoosh. Greetings. We know hello. Um, good morning. You're just going to pair the two signs we already know. Good morning. So it comes down into here and then comes up from under. Good morning. You can do it one-handed. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good night. Or good evening. Good night. Uh, how are you doing? How are you? Fine. There's another way to ask how are you or... Um, more like what's happening and you're going to take the middle finger and touch it to your your muscles here boom and flick them up it's really much like the budweiser commercial that was up that one so it's what's up and that also it's a combined what's happening and how are you feeling so people can answer either way so what's up oh i'm fine i'm good mm -hmm. or nothing nothing's happening um it's also like what's new what's new not much, not much. Same old, same old, right? Do, do, do. So we've got more of those. Um, I think we've done all. We didn't do lousy. You take the three hand shape, put the thumb on your nose, and just go lousy. Uh, lousy. Um, I think in one class we did excited. You're going to take that middle finger again and brush it going up excited you alternate you don't do this i'm excited and look excited don't go 
Uh, nervous, nervous, scared, <laughs> nervous, um, stressed. That'll be a good one. So here is your high pressure system right here, and you're trying to hold it in. Someone has shaken your beer, and you can see the can start to buckle, right? So you're like, oh, it's going to go. It's going to go. So that someone tapped your bottle with their bottle, and it's about to come out. You're like, no, don't do it. That's stressed. And you can even do it up and down. I'm like, no, I'm barely holding it in. So, so, tired, sick. We already did those. Farewells. Oops. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Good night, good night. And see ya. See you later. Or see you soon, where you take, it's like name, but you brush it up again. See you soon. Shortly. Uh, I've seen see you around. See you around. See you the next time we interact with each other. See you. Okay. Days of the week. So I'm going to show you a very clear way of doing it. There's a more casual way. Um, the clear way is palm forward Monday, and you just take the letter of the word, the name, Monday, and do a circle. Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, you do T into H and then circle the H. Thursday, because you don't want two Tuesdays in the week, right? Because God knows one Tuesday is enough. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday is the only one that's really different. Sunday, Sunday. And it comes from the sign for wonderful or great, which actually comes from like alleluia, um, church, praise be, that kind of thing, Sunday. Uh, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The casual way of signing them is not to turn the palm forward. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday is always the same. Um, th those can be a little hard to see. So I will recommend to start with, do it forward. It's almost like people will say, are you, did you pronounce something weird? Do you have an accent? And you're like, no, I just pronounce things really clearly. Um, so that's what this is. This is for the stage for public presentation, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So uh, that's those. Introductions. So the sign for introduce is this. You, I'm going to bring you here. You, I'm going to bring you here and I'm going to bring you together. So introduce. Um, we know hello, my name, or hi, me, and then fingerspell your name. We know nice to meet you. And remember, it's you and me, they come together, right? Nice to meet you. You wouldn't do nice to meet you. Meet you. And then I'd like to, remember like, or you could say I want, I want, want, want to introduce you. And then this name, this name. So this person think, ah, here's a key. Remember, you're saying this person, their name is, and you're going to tell it to this person. And their name, uh, so, and then their name is this. That's going to be weird to get used to, but right, oh, this guy, this third person telling you. Okay. So it's going to be weird. We're going to practice this in class. Don't worry about it. Um, we're going to have a really fun activity of introducing each other to other people, not strangers, but manners, something I'm not good at. Um, sign for excuse me. It's also the sign for excuse excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. So you just take the fingertips and you run it down the, basically the middle finger, right down the middle of the hand. I gotta get through. Excuse me. Um, may I ask a question? There's another way to sign that is, it's the sign for curious. I'm, I'm curious. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? You'll sometimes see that. And then thank you. Thank you is double blowing a kiss. Thank you. It's similar to the sign for good. Thank you. Thank you. You can do it one-handed. And you're welcome. Uh, your welcome is this. It's, you'll see a couple different variations of it. And it feels weird because you're like, well, I'm giving it away. Why am I bringing it into myself? But it's, 
it's the sign for welcome. Usually it's like, oh, welcome to my house. Welcome, come on in. So we tend to do you're welcome. Some people will sign you're welcome. That's like, oh, go ahead. Go ahead and take it. Um, the book gives, a, or the what's the sign gives a couple of variations. They're all basically the same as, no, you're good. Ah, no, nah, it's fine. Perfect. Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. Nah. So uh, look at the the vocab, the what's the sign in um, in the, the menu options, the what's the sign. And there are a couple of variations that you can do. Clarifications. We know what um, understand and don't understand. Understand, don't understand. Um, can you please repeat that? Uh, it usually starts with a, ho, 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 wait, 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 wait. Please repeat or repeat, please. Can you say that again? Same thing. Sign again, please. Or spell again, please, right? Can you finger spell that again? And your name spell again. That's a good one to practice. Um, we'll do that in the classroom where uh, when we do those introductions. I'd like you to stop and go, oh, could you repeat your name? And then finger spell to make sure everything's clear. Best to practice that one because when you need it, you want it to just drop nice and easy. So here's a guided dialogue, something to practice. Um, if you practice both sides of this dialogue, then when we get together, it will be easier. There's a weird question in the middle of it. Are you deaf? It's a very common thing within uh, gatherings where someone will, the deaf people want to figure out who's deaf, um, who's deaf and who's hearing. Um, I don't think there was a time when I was on tour that if we went into a gay bar that people didn't know right away, like just by looking at me like, oh, you dress poorly, you can't dance, must be straight. Um, so a similar thing will, will happen where deaf people want to know who's deaf and who has similar experiences. Um, there are sometimes hearing people who will try to act deaf and it's really kind of insulting to try to, 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 try to seemingly lie about who you are. It's disrespectful. So don't be uncomfortable if someone asks if you're deaf and don't be uncomfortable asking someone if they're deaf. Um, it's an identity. It's a piece of their identity and it's important to them. So you can be like deaf and remember eyebrows up because it's a yes, no question. So you deaf eyebrows up question and people will either tell you or they could say I'm hard of hearing, right? And then nice to meet you. And then you too, you too, because it's not really, yes, I'm the same. Nice to meet you. Yes, I feel the same way. It's a bit pretentious. But you're, oh, you too, you too, you too. That's a good one for the neutral same. Now we get into this list of vocab um, that will be introduced, but look over these and then you'll see them in the videos. Finish. It's like peekaboo. Ha ha finish. You don't want to do it down. It's palm forward. Peekaboo. It's the, um, it's from, what was that movie? Pan's Labyrinth, where the guy's got the eyes in his hands. So finish, finish. We know repeat. Online and internet, we take the middle finger down, the internal one, and we connect it like wires. That's internet. Internet or networking. That's where it originally came from. Computer. Take a C and just brush it along the back of your hand. Computer. We could also do laptop, like you're opening a laptop. Book. Book. And remember, nouns do a, like a two repeat. Boom, boom. Book. Class. So it's the group. And if it's more of a C, it's more like a class. Either one works. Um, concept. Take a look at what they show in the video. This is one that's very popular concept, like idea, think concept. Translate or translation, you're going from one to the other, one language to the other language. Um, you'll see this as well for like interpret because it's using language. And you'll sometimes see TL, translate. This one's the better one and it's the more commonly accepted. There's a couple different ones for if. The one we're using right now is if, which means suppose. Suppose this happens, what would you do? Suppose, suppose. And it's an eye tapping below your eye. 
suppose. Video or video and record, record myself, record you. They're also in their dictionary, they use this for like movie copy. Don't copy movies, that's piracy. Okay. Um, homework or homework. This is the one they tend to use in the videos. Study. Do, you'll sometimes see this for do, which means like action. What, do you, what are you going to do? This tends to be more used now. What are you doing? Um, please and sorry. So please with an open hand. Sorry. Either with an S or with an A. And test. There are two different ways that you can think about test. They basically come from this, the question. If I'm going to give you a bunch of questions, I could do, here's your test or quiz. Starts off with just simple questions and ends up being a flurry, right? Test or test, test. So it's repeated questions. So that's test. Okay. Um, want. Now these are opposites. So we've got signs and then they're opposite. These are sort of special because we wouldn't, with most other signs, we just use not or no to pair up with. But these have their own signs. So we'll start with those. So we've got want want. Think of a little kid taking whatever they want. Want. And don't want, where you grab it and go, ew, I don't want that. Don't want. Don't want. Like picking lint off your shirt, right? And then going, ew, don't like. I don't like that. Um, no. It's like the start of the sign for why. No. Just touch your forehead. Oh, I know. If you've learned something, you know it. Right? So no and don't know or don't know. You can do it with both hands. I don't know. I don't know. Um, understand? Don't understand. So with all of these, you can also do want, don't want. Like, don't like. The head. I know. I don't know. I understand. I don't understand. Correct. Right? Correct. And incorrect. Um, sorry. That was the wrong answer. Um, now. No positive or negative. Now, later. Or you could do now and it's done, right? That could be an opposite as well. So, oh, we can do that now or um, too late. Too late, bub, period. And then once we, this is the activity, conversation starter, something to practice. If you can Zoom with someone, this is a good thing to practice. Like introduce, right? And then um, ask if they're deaf, ask and verify their name. So this is the conversation started to practice. I would like to do an activity in class where we do social distance, greeting, uh, meet and greet or cocktail party, where two people in class, students will walk up to each other. Hi, well, not even walk up to each other, walk within, outside of six feet from each other and say, oh, hi, meet them. What's your name? Oh, great. Then someone will wave to someone else in the room, get their attention and say, Oh, I want to introduce you to this person. And then you exchange the two names. Then you guys can verify. Oh, your name is what your name is what? All oh, right. Oh, are you deaf? So one of them, one of you will ask, are you deaf? Or you can ask, are you hearing? And the other person will answer. And then you could say, Oh, nice to meet you. And then those two people can do it to someone else. So it's just this chain of practicing that little dialogue. It's going to feel really dumb, but it's good to have those really smooth for when we get out. So now we do the review. What'd you learn? And just go back over what I signed because I'm not signing all over again. And then we're, I'm only allowed to use this if we're official. So blah, blah, blah. So that is 1.3. There's a lot in it. And this may be the last one that I can only, that I can do with just one video. But um, hopefully this is a good prep for the things you're about to watch through the snapshots.